Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today I thought that we would continue our How to Scope to Cafe series and I opened up my very old cafe here that I obviously closed down because it wasn't doing anything and so today we're going to be trying to build a map just like this in, in Roblox and I'm going to teach you everything on how you can do it. Let me just open up uh, a game. Uh, let's open up our Homescope to Cafe game and we'll make this map here from We'll make a map like this from scratch. So let's get right on with the video. Okay, so right here we have our map with our cafe that we have built right here on a speed build. And if I may ask you that this build looks terrible. This is one of the most terrible builds that you could ever make. Now, if you saw the other builds, you saw that it looked, you know, something like you could build like this. So I'm going to build a cafe, but we're going to be building a spawn point. So first things first, when you grab your spawn point, I'm going to use a cylinder. And you want to have your cylinder rotating like, so there's like 45 degrees. I usually use 45 degrees, and then I just rotate this twice, and it becomes 90 degrees. And I also grab myself a block. And that way, now we're going to hit scale, and we're just going to scale this up, and we're going to make a circular spawn area. Let me just scale this up as well, like so. And you're just going to bring it across and bring it out. Now, Gonna be some things that we're gonna have to do. This really hard to up this here. Can you bring that out more like so back. Now we kind of have this, and we just put this as concrete, like so. And now we kind of have a little bit of a spawn point area. And then you just put your spawn point on here, and then you have this. Now, usually, let me just grab something from over here. So this is your sand part. And you can just put this going around your spawn point. Put it like going in different sections, make it bigger, smaller, whatever you want. Then you should have made yourself a nice little spawn area. And then I usually use low poly trees. Okay. And we're going to grab okay, so we have this right here, which we have a snow tree, regular tree. I'm thinking that maybe we could use. Let me ungroup this. Let's use snow cap tree. Exactly what's on here. The leaves. Okay. Exactly what's happening there. Okay. We're gonna put the snow cap trees and then we're gonna find this one as well. We're gonna use this as leaves. And bring the mesh ID here. Let's take this, leaves S1, and we'll just put the mesh right there. Let's grab this texture ID, bring this leaves S and put that like so. And now let's just put this as background transparency to be one for now. So now we have a tree. And we're just going to put it right around this sand area, like so. Okay, now we have our little spawn area finished right here. Just a small spawn area, and now you can kind of see that there's some trees that go around the map on the spawn area, but what we don't have is a variation within trees. Now we can look for more trees, that is so. 
And in the summertime, I usually use a palm tree. And it is summer. It is September right now, so it's still summer until it gets to fall. So I'm going to put, you know, some palm trees around. Let's see, is this a low poly palm tree then? Low poly palm trees. I think that these palm trees look nice with the style bed that we kind of want to go with. So we have a variation within our palm trees. So let's just grab them. And then you, you always use your rotate tool to help you. I do have palm trees that are also in my other game. But I think this will give us a nice variation between the trees. And I usually make the palm trees a little bit bigger. I don't think I like these palm trees anymore. They are too fat. So let me go grab my other palm tree. Okay, so here's the palm tree that I, that I use in my cafe. And let's just make this a little bit smaller. It'll kind of be like so. Okay, and then we're just going to move these palm trees around and just put them to where I best see fit. Okay, so now we have a few palm trees surrounding the area, so it gives a little bit of a variation between the trees. Now, I do think that we have too many of these small pine trees here. We can definitely scale some of the pine trees up so we can do bigger and smaller ones. But obviously, you want to have variation between your trees around your map, so you don't always want to have the same tree going around the entire map. So I just scaled up some of the palm trees, not palm trees, the pine trees. And now I think we can use one more tree on here. Which I think we could use this little poly tree right here. And this will add to the variation on the map. Let's scale this down just a little bit. Because you don't want to have two tall trees and two small trees. Now obviously this is just a spawn point. So you don't really need to have too much variation, but this is where people are going to first see your game and first see the map. Now, when you're putting parts together, make sure that you, when you're working on, when you're working on your map, that you're not putting too much of the same stuff. And you, I usually always use low poly because I see that as being uh, not being performance heavy, so I use a lot of low poly items and your bigger trees you don't want to have them blocking your smaller trees because your smaller trees are the ones that are smaller and your bigger trees show much more so i usually if i usually just put some of the smaller trees and bigger trees together like so and you always put variation between your trees around your map and now there's a lot of other variation that you can do with with the scenery and I'll show you that as well. So I put down some more trees, and I think that this adds to the variety that you have around on here. Now, what are some other things that you could also do as well? And make sure that your palm trees are... I usually put, if all my trees are not hitting on the ground, I just put them down into the ground. So make sure that they are aligned properly, and I'll align these trees properly, and I'll get back, and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I finished aligning the trees. Now, around here we have this sand area. There's not much you can put on the sand. And I can definitely see exactly why. But I'm going to grab one more tree from my other cafe. And it's this tree, one that I usually that I used once. This is going to be on the smaller side of the tree, so like small tree. Now we can definitely see that we have a color scheme going on here, so this light color is not going to fit. Now we're going to go back to our explorer. I like the one tree, foliage, let's put that as, um, and this is usually not plastic, it is smooth plastic. And look at that. Now we do have this right here, which I want to see. If I put that texture up on here, for the foliage, okay, that wouldn't work. So what color is this tree over here? Sand green. Okay. So I'm going to put this on here as sand. Here, let me just, oh, it is sea green, not sand green. Okay, 
Now I'm just going to bring this tree and put this also around the map as well. You don't need a lot of trees around your map. But this just, this just, the, adding variation around your map with the trees it gives your game a little bit of a pop. Now if you're going to use a big cafe, I recommend using low poly. And if you're going to use regular terrain, also use low poly trees or just use fake trees and not part heavy trees because multiple parts will cause your game to lag and crash. A lot of people will crash that are not high-end users. So now that we have our scenery out on here, you can definitely see that now our spawn area is filled with trees. Now usually when people come up here, they go up some stairs and they get up to the map. So we're going to put down a spawn point. Also, you want to make sure that your parts are anchored. Go over here and hit anchor. Now we're going to put in our spawn point right here. And then we're going to scale this down. like a small square. We're going to remove our decal from there and then we're going to make this as transparency one. Now people will spawn right here on the map. Oops. And this is what they're going to first see when they spawn in. They're going to spawn in like this and they're going to see that big cafe that you have over there. Now there's also scenery that you can do around the map. Which I really like these leaning trees as well. So we're going to keep these trees for later. So obviously when you're using asset packs, I usually always put them over out in the abyss because there's really nothing you can do with that. Now once you have this, you can obviously position this any way that you want. So if you want to rotate this 45 degrees like that, and then the map will go like this. You can definitely put this any way that you want. But this is generally how you can do a little bit of building. Put two and two parts together. Now you have this ugly build here. You, you have a build over here that's ugly. Now, what, what could you do? Well, you really like the way that there's two that there's two sets of rooms. So, like, you can have, like, two sets of rooms. And then, you know, you probably have the counter in this middle space. So, Frappe Cafe, kind of, like, this is what I kind of based it off. Frappe Cafe has this walk-in area. that has, like, this big open back area. Their B3 Cafe. And then with the big arch. Now, obviously, a lot of cafes are going to be different, so we're going to have put this back here. So if we open this room up, we can definitely see that, yes, this kind of looks okay and good. You have your door, your two windows, and now we have all this room for a counter. Now, what could I do? What do some cafes usually use? They usually use floor to ground. They usually use floor to ceiling windows, and they usually have double floors. So now the question brings, how are we going to get up to the cafe? Now usually some cafes, they use stairs. Now I'm going to grab the same stairs that I used from my other cafe. So right here, you can definitely see that that is super big. So bring this down like so. But I don't really like this. I don't really like these stairs. So I'm going to take that away. And now there's, there, there's ways that you could do some stairs. So you can have like a block here. Let me rotate it. Anchor it. Fail it. Do it like this. Move. Okay, and then you can do this as plastic, concrete. And then you're going to grab yourself a another part. We're going to do this as a cylinder part. Control T for tilt. Then you're going to scale like so. You're just going to scale it as big as you want the stair to be. I kind of see that maybe this is a fat part for a stair. We're definitely going to bring this down just a little bit like so. We can move this in.
Then you're going to use your negate. Do this, and you get hit union. Now we have this piece right here that can count as a stair. So collisions. I usually have move one stud. Move one stud like so. I think maybe we should take this. Move that one stud out. Hit union like so. Move one stud and move another stud like that. So it's two studs. Now you have a little bit of a stairway. Different stairway than before. And it adds to variation within the map. Now you have your area that when you go up, you have some stairs. Now what else can we do to this map to make it better? So now usually after this, you have your other parts as well. So these parts, and they go up to your top stair, like so. I kind of do it a little bit like this, and then you have your part. And this is if you're doing water, like the map goes so. Then you put your ground piece in. So it's going to be, ground piece will be grass, concrete. We'll put this right here as grass. And we can do this as C green. And then it usually goes around like that. Now you have a start to, to a map. Then you can bring this back up here. Now that to be super thin. Scale that up just like a little bit. Just so we can hit that part. Scale this back. Down this down just a little bit more. And now you have a start for your map. Then you can move the grass piece any place that you want, like so. And then you can start putting your trees around here. But now you have your spawn area, and it goes up to a place where you can have your cafe. So definitely use these tools when you're making your, your own cafe. And in no time, you will have a map that looks like the one I'm about to show you. Soon you'll have a map that looks just like this one right here, where you have some nice foliage, and it's not too covered in foliage. You have this little spawn area right here. You can definitely do whatever you want in your spawn area. I have this right here. You can definitely use in your cafe. You have your little merch area as well. And obviously, I did not use any sizing tools. So obviously, this my Twist Cafe was, you know, very gigantic. And obviously, this is how you can turn your maps to be from ugly to very, 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 very good. So I hope these tips have been useful for you, and I hope that you use these in your in your um, cafe. Um, in next ca how to script a cafe video, we'll go back to scripting instead of building. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye now. I'm